Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global App Sec 2020. My name is John Ellingsworth, and today I'm going to be speaking to you about OWASP SAM 2.0, a flagship project from the OWASP organization uh, used extensively across the world. And today I'm going to give you an overview of what the SAM project is all about, how you can use it in your organization, and some tools of the trade to help you get started quickly. Uh, for, for background, my name is John Ellingsworth. I live in the United States in the uh, New England area. I uh, attended a couple of universities, one in Philadelphia and one both in Philadelphia, actually. I've uh, been involved with cybersecurity and web technology for over 20 years, working in startups. I've worked in higher education. I now work in the corporate world, uh, doing software development, architecture, security, uh, software development management. Uh, and currently, I'm a member of OWASP. I'm a main chapter lead. And I'm also a member of the SAM core project team. I'm also a member of InfraGuard and ASCP, uh, where I contribute occasionally to talks and other presentations. So what is SAM? SAM is a software assurance maturity model. It's a open framework that allows you to effectively measure and manage uh, software development within your organization from a security perspective and to continuously improve your security posture. Uh, specifically, it's measurable, actionable, and versatile. Um, by measurable, um, it allows you to define specific maturity levels that you would like to achieve within your organization based upon uh, your business posture. Your, uh, yep, I'm gonna start to slide over. Yep, uh, software assurance maturity, so yep. <laughs> so what is SAM? SAM is a software assurance maturity model, an open framework from OWASP that provides an effective and measurable way for managing software development within your organization and improving your security posture within the software development functions. Uh, it's intended to be a measurable, actionable, and versatile framework, one that allows you to um, define maturity levels across your business and software development business practices based upon things like risk cost, risk levels and uh, risk ranking. It provides clear pathways for improving your maturity levels that are incrementally achievable over time. And it's versatile. It doesn't adhere to a specific technology process or uh, software development practice such as waterfall or scrum. It tends, its goal is to be agnostic to all of those capabilities. So what, what resources does SAM provide? It provides a way for evaluating your organization's existing software security practices. What are you doing today? How well are you doing it? What are the opportunities for improving it? Uh, for, it allows you to build a balanced software security assurance program in well-defined iterations that are applicable to your organization's speed and your uh, development lifecycle. It allows you to demonstrate these concrete improvements over time to your security insurance program by focusing on specific measurable objectives and activities. And those activities are designed to be specific to your particular organization. And there's no need to focus on activities that bring low value to the organization, but instead allow you to focus on high value activities that are achievable in a short turnaround time. Um, so, Sam, it's another model. Um, George E.P. Box says the most that can be expected from any model is that it can supply a useful approximation to reality. All models are wrong, so models are useful. Um, Sam is not a perfect model, but it is a highly usable and adaptable model. So in your organization, you can tailor it to your organizational needs and leverage the components of the model that are most practical and valuable to your organization. Some of the principles, there are four guiding principles for the software assurance maturity model. An organization's behavior changes slowly over time. Um, there's no, no, no reason to try and boil the ocean all at once. The changes are intended to be iterative, working toward a long-term goal of increasing maturity, of not only of the organization, but of the individual contributors and the teams involved with, that, with those goals. Uh, there's no single recipe that works for all organizations. Uh, the solution must be risk-based to the organization. Guidance related to security actions must be prescriptive. Uh, there is 
um, the solution should really provide enough guidance for people to understand what needs to be done from a security perspective, particularly for non-security people, so that there's buy-in and alignment with the goals that you're trying to achieve. And overall, it must be simple, well-defined and measurable. And those are the guiding principles of OWASP SAM. And those are the things that we'll be talking about today. Uh, just a bit of brief background on the project. The project the OWASP SAM is actually a reincarnation of an earlier named OpenSAM, the Open Software Assurance Maturity Model. Started in March, 2009, um, kind of was released at that time, but a lot of development did not take place until March, 2016, uh, when there was a 1.1 version release, but then a decision was also made to migrate and donate the project over to OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project in March, 2016. Uh, in, during the period of March 2016 to February 2017, a lot of work was done, particularly around the OWASP SAM toolkit. Uh, and in February 2017, OWASP SAM 1.5 was released. Since 2017, a lot of work was then contributed towards 2.0. And in January 2020 of this year, OWASP SAM 2.0 was released. There's a lot of active development going on with the project. Uh, it's currently hosted on GitHub, where you can find more information and I'll provide some links later on for you to find that. So at a high level, SAM is, an, is intended to provide an adaptable approach. Uh, the cycle generally follows this pattern here where we prepare uh, the organization for a rollout of a SAM framework. We do the assessments, uh, we set the target, of maturity levels that we would like to achieve within particular software development functions and the activities involved with that. We define a plan for that over time, whether that's a period of uh, one year, two years, three years, four years, a multi-phase approach that gets defined and then implemented within the organization and then subsequently rolled out. Um, once that rollout is done for a particular phase, it makes sense to, at the end of each phase, to assess and evaluate the progress that has been made, uh, recognize the achievements of the teams, celebrate the maturity that has been improved, and then go through the process again of evaluating and setting the target, updating the plan, implementing and rolling it out until you achieve the desired maturity level within your organization. So SAM versions 1.5 and 2.0. Um, there's some big changes between the two, uh, primarily in with regard to the number of software development function, business functions that exist within the framework. In 1.5, there are four. In SAM 2.0, there were five. Some of them were kind of uh, reevaluated in terms of their specific criteria, as well as recognizing that things like Scrum and DevOps and DevSecOps have basically required the evaluation of maturity to be uh, redefined, so new functions were added as well. Uh, there are still three security practices for each business function. Uh, those security practices are intended to cover the areas relevant to software security assurance and software development from a security perspective. Uh, the activities within those practices are now presented in a more logical flow, um, divided into two streams, uh, intended to link the activities within the practice over the various maturity levels. And we'll talk about it a little bit in a moment. And each stream is basically an objective that can be reached within increasing levels of maturity. This way there aren't activities that are kind of orphaned or done on their own that don't have some kind of logical relationship to the other activities being performed by the team. And so here at a high level is a 1.5 view. We can see uh, the bit four business functions of 1.5 of governance, construction, verification, and operations. Each broken down with three separate security practices that um, we can see here. 2.0 basically changed a few of the names of those. For example, um, construction is no longer within this uh, framework. It's been broken out into design and implementation, uh, giving us the five total. We have governance, design, implement implementation, verification, and operations. Within uh, governance, uh, we have strategy and metrics, policy and compliance, and education and guidance. Uh, those are things that leadership is uh, 
tends to be most interested in. So uh, a strong emphasis on establishing those early as part of your maturity uh, plan is a, is a good, good way to set the, set the framework up in your organization. Design, um, critical phase, uh, threat assessment, security requirements, and secure architecture, foundational components to that. Implementation consists of secure build, secure deployment, and defect management. Verification, we have architecture assessment, requirements driven testing, driven testing and security testing. Uh, this is where your pen testing may take place. You may have uh, DAST or SAS tools in place where you might be using to validate development practices. And then operations, we have incident management, environment management, and operational management. So let's take a look at these in a little more detail. Um, actually, these are the um, areas that are new within the 2.0 framework. Um, so let's take a look at those in more detail. So within the governance function, we have the streams on the left of create and promote under strategy and metrics, policy and standards under policy and compliance uh, in stream A, and training and awareness in stream A. So we can see that a, in an organization, there might be a desire to focus upon uh, a given stream within any of the business functions and practices within those functions. Um, in design, we have threats under threat assessment, app risk profile, software requirements, architecture design. A nice consideration for the design and all of these as well is that these activities and streams may apply to scenarios where you are doing in-house development or custom development only and you wanna apply the framework specific to that type of uh, software management versus software that you've acquired through a third-party vendor, you may still decide to uh, use the SAM framework against those third-party vendors that are providing software for you and do validation of their maturity levels and implementations and those types of things uh, for assurance within your organization. Uh, so secure build, we have build process, uh, secure deployment, deployment process, and defect management, defect tracking. And so each of these streams uh, have been added to the 2.0 version, which, as I mentioned earlier, allow you to focus uh, on specific objectives within those business functions uh, and achieve maturity levels specific to your organization. All right, so uh, when it comes to maturity levels and scoring, um, SAM is basically defined um, is, okay, I'm gonna start over on that slide. Okay, so maturity levels and scoring. In, in SAM, um, the intention of the framework, of course, is to determine the maturity level of the software development practices within your organization and provide transparency over the different levels of maturity within the organization so that you can tailor um, improvements and activities specific to those maturity levels. It also increases visibility to uh, key stakeholders within your organization. So the framework generally provides uh, three levels of maturity. There's actually a fourth, if we consider zero, um, which basically consists of, um, you know, an organization may not be actually doing anything within a particular activity. And so they're at a level zero. Uh, in the case of an organization where teams are doing things at an ad hoc level, uh, they may occasionally do some pen testing. They may have a dynamic scanning tool that they run occasionally. They may do pen testing once or twice in the lifetime of an application, but they're not doing it with any kind of uh, repeatability. Um, at level two, a team is actually doing things in a repeatable manner uh, with a focus on efficiency and effectiveness, and they're doing it on at least half of the applications that within the organization or within the scope of the assessment. And level three is uh, certainly uh, there is mastery within the organization across and across the organization. Um, most are all stakeholders or applications within scope are uh, achieving those or performing those activities uh, and they're evaluating them manually, for example, to determine the effectiveness and, and areas of improvement for those activities each year. Uh, so within SAM, 
uh, within the version two 2020, uh, there's been some focus on how the questions were put together within the assessment toolbox. Uh, the assessment toolbox is a, basically at this point in time, it's a Microsoft Excel document. Uh, there are some other variations of that, which we'll go over shortly, but the founding tool was an Excel document that uh, basically asks a series of questions for each, uh, within each stream and activity regarding uh, what the teams are doing or the organization is doing with regard to that particular question. So in this particular case, the question around strategy and metrics and the promotion of, of risk to prioritize applications by, there's some quality criteria underneath the question, such as you have captured the risk appetite of your organization's executive leadership. Uh, the organization's leadership have vetted and approved risks. You've identified the main business and technical threats to your organization's assets and data, and risks are documented and accessible to relevant stakeholders. Uh, there, there are numerous organizations that have really not gone through this type of risk assessment for, our, for the applications that they're uh, basically responsible for. And so uh, this is an area where prioritizing these things and creating a, a set of activities to improve the maturity of the organization is instrumental to um, effectively improving the organization's maturity on this particular stream. And the questions follow this kind of template throughout the framework uh, without, within the toolbox. Uh, so within a stream you have, or I should say within a, a business function such as governance and under strategy and metrics, you have a stream and a maturity level, a question and then some quality criteria for that question. So as you go through the toolbox, if you decide to play around with it, you'll, you can read these quality criteria, which will help guide both the interviewer and, to, and interviewees to understand what is it that the question is actually asking and to answer the question as honestly as you can with full awareness of what it means to meet the criteria that's being asked. We'll take a look at some of those other questions shortly. So how do you uh, achieve success within your organization? One is you need to have buy-in from key stakeholders. Key stakeholders are maybe product owners, software development team itself, members of your security team if they exist separately from software development team, um, directors, managers, directors, all the way up to the C-level. Um, you wanna adopt a risk-based approach. You definitely want to do some kind of risk assessment of the applications that exist within your portfolio. Determine, for example, uh, revenue at risk. What is the risk of, uh, of us having some kind of business impact if we don't focus on this application? There are a lot of risk-based uh, approaches to determining that that you can certainly reference. And revenue at risk is certainly a good one. Reputational risk, a lot of different risk factors to consider, but. Uh, once you've gone through that risk-based assessment and prioritization, you can then focus on those applications that are high risk or critical risk. Uh, clearly define the initiative scope. Uh, scope is an interesting and, and probably one of the more interesting challenges within SAM in that you need to very clearly understand uh, what, what applications are in scope for the assessment and uh, the metrics that you're going to be generating from that assessment. For example, in a large corporation, you may have multiple lines of business and within those lines of business, you have may, may have multiple product teams, each with their own independent software development teams supporting those products. Um, you may have, and within those lines of business, there are different levels of business criticality and risk involved with those applications. So uh, you definitely want to make sure that you segment the applications into the appropriate scope so that when you're performing an assessment of a set of applications, you are comparing apples to apples in terms of the maturity level and not doing an apples to oranges comparison, uh, which, because if you do, you'll run the risk of um, not, you know, not fairly assessing the applications, uh, imposing activities and practices on the teams that are developing those applications that may be unnecessary and or not bringing business value. Um, so clearly defining the initiative scope is, is an important factor. Awareness and education are the foundation. Uh, there are many organizations where uh, software development security practices are just not really understood. They're not, uh, may not even be aware of them at certain levels within the organization. So 
sharing the um, activities, what should, we, what, what should we be doing is a critical component of success within rolling out the framework. Um, integration and automation, of course, is, is the only way to become scalable in this day and age. So, but integrating it within not only development, but acquisition, working with third-party vendors, and also with deployment and operational side of software development. Uh, you need to really uh, integrate those fully and automate them so that you can scale effectively. Uh, and most importantly, measure. So uh, you, if, as, as we all know, we've heard the phrase, if you're not measuring it, you can't manage, manage it. Uh, and so this framework will allow you to measure the performance over time, the maturity over time, and provide management the visibility they need to understand how to prioritize not only resources, but uh, funding and, and other initiatives that support those activities. Okay, uh, so we're gonna shift a little bit now and talk about tools of the trade that will help you, help you uh, in your implementation of OWASP SAM within your organization. Um, right now, we are aware of at least six tools that exist that help you get started with the framework and actually will allow you to implement and fully manage your, the program if you choose to do so. Uh, those consist of the OWASP SAM toolkit provided by the SAM project. It's a Microsoft Excel based version of an assessment questionnaire. There's a SAM 2.0 calculator by Concord USA, which is an organization, a company in the United States that provides security assessments uh, and services to companies that would like to leverage their expertise. Uh, SAM 2.0 dashboard, which was developed by Satish Ashwin and which has been actually uh, been contributed to the OWASP SAM project and available on GitHub. It's a standalone application you can run in your own environment. Uh, OWASP maturity models is another web application that you can set up and run within your organization. There also is uh, in active development and evaluation, uh, the OWASP SAM toolkit in a Google Docs version. Uh, so instead of dependency on Microsoft Excel, we shift it to uh, Google Sheets and um, our currently working with that uh, version to um, for full compatibility. And then there's the OWASP SAM assessment, which is also built on Google Docs using Google Forms and Google Data Studio, uh, which allows you to capture data and then run it through some good visualizations in Google Data Studio. So let's take a quick look at each one of these and see what they have to offer. The OWASP SAM toolkit from Microsoft Excel, um, it, it contains all the assessment questions from the framework. Uh, there are 90 questions in total. Uh, and it does automatic maturity level calculations. So uh, as you go through each of the questions, there's a rating box we can see there in the screenshot on the right that will actually uh, develop or convey or represent your current maturity level. There's also a scorecard uh, tab or sheet within the document within the file that allows you to visualize your maturity level. It has actually a roadmap calculation tool that allows you to uh, select your your desired maturity level in each of the phases that you go through in order to uh, successfully come up with a plan. And then there's a roadmap roadmap chart that will show you your progress over time. Uh, this is ready to use. It's uh, actively supported, actively developed. Uh, from by the OWASP SAM project, and um, you can visit it at go, uh, the GitHub site and download it and get started. Uh, here's a, a kind of a zoom in view of uh, an assessment of Teams ISU uh, done in March of this year, where they've done some answering of questions around um, strategy and metrics and the create and promote stream. So a rating level of less than one shows that they're in an ad hoc state and there's some opportunity to improve it. To improve it. Uh, here on this screen, we can see that after the assessment uh, was completed and all the questions were answered, we can see the current maturity score for this particular team. Uh, we can see in each of the functions and security practices, the maturity level, as well as within uh, each of the specific maturity levels themselves. Um, there's an opportunity for a team, it is possible for a team to generally uh, do fairly well in one maturity level versus another, which is just an, an indicator of an opportunity for improvement on other maturity levels. So this kind of view allows us to see the areas where teams are doing 
fairly well within a given maturity in practice. Uh, on the right side, we have a nice spider web chart that shows how we are currently performing um, in, with regard to maturity of all the various practices. Uh, here's the road mapping tool, which, uh, for example, in um, phase one uh, at the top there in the pink, we can see that um, the current answer to a given question is no, uh, but we can, in phase two, we can decide to focus upon improving that and changing that to the next level up, uh, which would be yes for at least half of the metrics. So each of those green cells, all the cells actually in the answer column is a drop-down box that you can select an answer to improve that particular maturity. If you choose to, um, to leave it the same, the cells in the subsequent phases will stay white. Uh, if you pump it up, then it will turn green. I should point out that that pink one there is an indicator that you've actually tried to lower the maturity level from, your, from the initial assessment, which is not a recommended practice. Uh, so as you do this, uh, you can see within each of the rating columns, the maturity level of each of those practices going up. And over time in the various phases, whether it's uh, two phases or four phases or N plus one phases, uh, your maturity level over time can, can be specifically seen and measured. So here we see, just as a kind of a prototype, uh, where the organization was at the start and then in phase one, phase two, phase three, and phase four, as the team uh, focuses on those particular activities. In this particular case, there was just a, this is just an example for the governance function. Uh, so SAM 2.0 calculator from Concord USA. Um, again, it's, it's similar to the Excel toolkit in that it's a self-guided assessment. Uh, does a very similar approach to uh, breakdown by function, function and practice and maturity. Uh, it's a web-based tool. It's actually available now. You can go to the URL at the bottom of the screen and check out their application. Uh, it, it provides a progress bar, uh, gives you uh, feedback as you complete each of the sections. And also, if you're uh, willing to sign up with your email address, you can become part of their industry benchmark comparison and it's ready to use. Uh, so here's an example of, of the web-based version, which as you can see, is quite easy to use. You can um, show more and see the criteria for the particular question if you need to understand the, what the question is asking a little bit more. Uh, and then on the right, you can pick the answer that's most applicable to your organization. And then at the end of that particular business function, we can see the outcome uh, and maturity level of a given team at that time. So in this particular case, uh, in strategy and metrics, 0.25 out of three, um, um, area of opportunity for improvement, uh, policy and compliance, education guidance. Each one of those uh, practices has a maturity level that you can you can dive into deeper to, to prioritize further. Uh, and then in, this, in this particular case, it gives you a score out of a total of nine which would be the uh, sum of each of those practices maturity level. So again, the URL at the bottom of the screen will allow you to do this assessment at any time. Uh, Sam 2.0 dashboard by Satish Ashwin. Uh, he developed this uh, on, on his own primarily. It's a, um, it's a SaaS application. It's uh, available at the link at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, it's, it's, it does have its own authentication, local authentication, with some role-based access control. It has a number of uh, nice visualizations within it, including practice trending, uh, readiness factor, um, trends over time, monthly trends. Uh, it is an Angular project. It, as I said, it's on GitHub under the OWASP project. It does allow you to generate a PDF or Excel report for sharing within your organization. Uh, it is self-hosted. There isn't currently one of these instances running anywhere as far as I'm aware of. Uh, that's certainly likely to change, uh, but it is ready to use if you uh, would like to, to stand it up within your organization. So uh, OWASP Maturity Models is a uh, node project on GitHub. Um, it's primarily focus has been more on BSIM, uh, which is another maturity model, um, more focused on descriptive approach of maturity and what organizations are doing. 
Uh, and it does have some integration with OAuth SAM, as you can see here in the screenshot. Uh, Self-hosted solution. Um, not sure if it's been updated to 2.0, but maybe worth exploring. Uh, Google Sheets. Uh, so Google um, Sheets is a web, you know, early version of uh, Microsoft Excel. It's been around for a while now. Um, in this particular uh, case, we did an import of the Excel version within to Google Sheets, and the compatibility was pretty good. Uh, certainly, some fine tuning uh, was needed, and is still needed to keep it um, in sync with the Excel version. We're working on looking at automating the integration between the Google Sheets and the updates to the GitHub project, so that it's, uh, for example, if if assessment questions change, there is no need to change the Google Sheets version. There could be a master that stays in sync. Uh, it can be used, it can be exported uh, as an Excel file itself. You can use it locally. You can also export data out uh, to other reporting tools uh, and share with others. Uh, other reporting tools could potentially include something like Google Data Studio or Tableau uh, using their automated integration with Google Sheets. Uh, and then Google Forms and Data Studio are, is yet another tool that's available. Uh, so Google Forms is built on top of Google Sheets, allows you to basically build a survey or an assessment tool in this case, uh, using Google Sheets that you can share with people either within your organization using Google Authentication. You can share with anyone really who has a valid email address. Uh, data is stored in Google Sheets. Uh, it's a pretty easy, uh, it's a pretty easy form to maintain in general, um, it can be cloned. So the existing form at the link below, you can make a copy of that form and tailor it to your organization. Um, if you'd like, responses can be edited. These are features and capabilities within Google Forms that you manage and can set. So if someone needs to, for example, edit an answer uh, or add additional information to support that answer, uh, they can do so. A nice, nice feature about this is that you can export it, as I said earlier, to other reporting tools, in particular Google State Data Studio, uh, which we we see here in a screenshot where an organization has done two assessments uh, using the toolkit, and then the data from the toolkit has been plugged into Google Data Studio, giving us some nice visually visualizations uh, out of the box that we can see here. Uh, it's it's it. It's actively being evaluated and, and validated as a viable alternative to uh, the Microsoft Excel version, just as another kind of tool in the toolbox for folks to use to hit the ground running. Uh, so the assessment uh, toolkit and toolbox is really kind of a foundational component of the, of the, uh, of the framework. So we would love to know what kind of features you would like to see in OWASAM assessment tools. Um, here on the screen, you can see there's a feature request form that we put together um, just to kind of gather some feedback. Of course, you can always submit um, a request into GitHub on the OWASAM SAM project uh, as well. Um, and, or if you prefer, you can drop us a line at OWASAM.org slash contact and let us know what you think about uh, the assessment tools uh, or the framework in general, or any other thoughts you might have about OWASAM. Um, so we really encourage, we can't do this on our own. It's a lot of work for a small number of global supporters and project members. Um, so we definitely would love you to your engagement, interaction, and collaboration. Uh, you can certainly learn more about OWASAM at OWASAM.org. Uh, you can check us out on Slack. It's a pretty busy channel, but we have members uh, constantly answering questions and providing support along the way. So check it out. Uh, GitHub, definitely please contribute anything if you find an issue, spelling mistake, issues with formatting, uh, technical issues, bugs, please let us know. We, we want to make it better. Um, sign up for the newsletter as a EE Pearl. There, you're all right there. It'll take you uh, to a MailChimp sign up page where you can join our mailing list. Uh, and then certainly check out the OWASP.org website under the Project SAM page. We would love to have your involvement. Uh, we do have some sponsorship. We can see a number of them here. We appreciate the support of all of our sponsors. And if you're interested in sponsoring, 
Oh, well, Sam, check out the URL at the bottom of the screen. We would love to have your support. Uh, and just at a high level, over the last uh, few years, these are some of the folks who've been actively involved with the development. This is certainly no, 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 not an exhaustive list, but um, many of these folks are actively involved today and continue to be involved and hopefully will continue to be involved in the future. And we'd love to add your name to the list. So uh, please join us. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Ellingsworth. Uh, you can reach out to me or find me at any of those uh, URLs there. So appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks. <laughs>